Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Konarski, and I'm a lead educator here at Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium. I want to thank you all for joining us today as we move into our fourth and final week for the month of September. We've been getting to hear some really amazing things and meet a lot of awesome individuals, all who have helped bring us more learning about public lands and how we can enjoy them, as well as what we can do to help them. So along with the live stream we do each week, we also offer a really cool and free virtual scavenger hunt that you can play right along home and with an activity guide, both with new missions and activities to do each month. To download this app and explore all of it, just go to www.wondersofwildlife.org forward slash mission dash conservation. This address will take you to our mission conservation webpage. On this page, just click the box to the right that says get the app and then click the download button. Follow the instructions there. Once you have that app downloaded, just create a username, account, and login. And then next, in the search bar, type in mission conservation. This is where all of our at-home missions will pop up for you to play. If you look a little bit further down, you'll see our featured missions and the most important and current missions we have to offer in this section. And since we've been partnering a lot with the USDA Forest Service, if you look there, you're also gonna see a special mission, the Smokey 2.0. We'll talk a little bit more about that one later. The last place I want to bring your guys' attention to is at the very bottom is the schedule of missions and activities. This section will allow all of our missions that include current mission are public lands. If you click on the plus sign, a little drop down tab will show up and you can find the link to the activity guide for this month. The activity guide will have a craft, a fun outdoor activity, something that you can do to get out and enjoy all these public lands that we have to offer. Right now, I'm currently standing in our Wonders of Wildlife exhibit here at Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium. Today, we're gonna to be meeting a number of awesome people. We have Jake Hauser, who is an engine captain for the Mark Twain National Forest Service. Maureen Brooks, who is a wildfire prevention program manager for the USDA Forest Service. And Tony, who is a natural resource specialist for Akala National Forest. Also joining us this week, we have another special guest. So let's go ahead and just get started. Here to start us off is the Mark Twain National Forest Service talking about the current relevance of wildfire prevention. How are you guys doing out there today? Good, how are you guys? Doing great. So I'm here with Smokey today, talk about a little bit of relevance of uh, wildland wildfire and wildfire season. Uh, so plan, prepare and prevent uh, wildfire season is a year round in many parts of the country now. Uh, what can you do to help support our firefighters and protect your family and uh, from wildland fires? So think about that question as I'm going through today. Uh, first is plan for wildfire. In many areas, May is Wildfire Awareness Month. As the weather becomes warmer and wildland vegetation or the fuel that the fire burns uh, begin to dry out, it is time to plan for the wildfires. During a wildfire, uh, embers cause most home ignitions. Uh, residents can harden homes, minimizing property damage and protecting firefighters. Help reduce putting firefighters in communities at risk by hardening your home to ember intrusion and creating defensible space on your private property. Uh, preparing your home, taking steps to make your home survivable and community adaptable to wildland fire helps protect uh, firefighters also. Uh, pre prevent wildfires. The public plays a, a very valuable role in preventing wildfires. The national average of human caused wildfires is about 90% of all wildland fire occurrences. Uh, every year. Most of these fires can be prevented. <clears throat> uh, preventable wildfires threaten lives, property, and our precious natural resources. Whether it, whether it is property properly extinguished, a campfire, or keeping your vehicle maintained to prevent sparks, uh, following just the simple steps can help prevent wildfires. And I'll touch more on that when we get into some of our prevention tips. Um, so learning how to properly use outdoor equipment, you know, burn your debris, uh, safely maintain, uh, starting maintaining and extinguishing your campfire and maintaining a vehicle and towing safely uh, and practice safe fire, practice fire safe target shooting are just a few of the tips we'll touch on. Uh, here in the Mark Twain National Forest, uh, we're a little different with our fire season. Uh, we, our fire season runs from October. So here in a couple of days till May, basically when the trees uh, lose their leaves till when the leaves come back on. Uh, so far this year, we've had 109 total fires for 8,064 acres, uh, which of those, 108 of those were human caused. Um, we also treat uh, with prescribed fire. We call that good fire. Uh, we did, we've done uh, so far this year, 55 total RX fires for 56,000 acres. Um, 
every preventable human cause wildfire has a potential to impact lives and property. Uh, Smokey's message of prevention of preventing unwanted human caused ignitions is more relevant today than ever before, as more people live close to the wildland uh, wildland uh, forests and wildland urban interface and recreate outdoors. So over to you, Maureen, for your uh, for you. Hi everyone, I'm Maureen Brooks. And as Alex mentioned, I'm a Wildfire Prevention Program Manager. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about our Wildfire Prevention Program and the Smoky Bear Campaign. So, you know, Jake just mentioned that nine out of 10 forest fires are caused by people. And of course they are preventable. So um, this has been a problem in our country for a long time and our campaign to educate the public about how they can, how everyone can use personal responsibility wherever we live, wherever we work and wherever we play to keep our forests and grasslands safe and to prevent wildfires. So um, the Forest Service was very concerned about this and the story really goes back to the last century. So in the 1940s, so almost, you know what, 80 years ago, um, the Forest Service was very concerned about all the fires that were happening on our national forests and grasslands. Um, the state agencies were concerned about all the forest, forest fires that were happening on, on other private and public lands in the country. And they decided to get together to have a national campaign. So um, they were searching for a way to show the public and have a symbol that would be used for wildfire prevention. And um, the first year that they did it, they used Bambi. Some of you may remember Bambi from, this, from Disney, Walt Disney, but Bambi was borrowed. Um, we borrowed Bambi from Walt Disney and just for a short period of time until we could determine what, 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 what could we use to uh, as a symbol for wildfire prevention to get people motivated to, um, to be safe when they're out. So, uh, but we settled on a bear and the first smoky bear was used in a campaign in 1944 and has been used in our campaigns ever since. So smoky has been with us a long time, um, more than 75 years. And, you know, he's, he's still going strong and he's out there teaching people how to prevent wildfires and what we can do to be safe. But some of you may know that there was actually a living Smokey Bear at one point. And I wanted to share that story with you. So, and, and this is actually a true story. Um, it started back in, um, in New Mexico is where the story is set on the Lincoln National Forest. And there was a little cub that was born on that forest and lived in lived there in New Mexico. And um, one day, you know, he played around in the forest as as bear cubs would do. And he was a black bear, mind you. Um, he would one day there was a forest fire that started and, you know, people started that fire is one of the things we know from that. Um, and. Um, so people started that fire. And one of the things that happened then is that someone called the ranger, the local ranger. And from that, they ended up um, sending all the firefighters out to put the, put the fire out. Um, they call it the Capitan Gap Fire. And so firefighters were out there fighting the fire. There were firefighters from the State Game Commission, from the National Forest, and also a, uh, a crew of hotshots from called the Snowball Crew um, who were out there. Now, once they put that fire out, um, the firefighters discovered that there was a little cub that had gone up a tree and he was badly burned. So the firefighters then took, took that little cub, got him down out of the tree. They then took him on to a, um, a veterinarian where he, um, 
where he was treated for his burns. He had burns on his paws, he had burns on his belly, and he really needed to be taken care of for a while. So uh, there was a family, the game warden's family, they took him in, and eventually um, that cub was, uh, they decided that that cub needed to be somewhere where he could help with the wildfire prevention campaign. So the, the folks there named him Smokey Bear after the, after the poster bear that we had. Um, and then he was flown from Capitan, New Mexico, across country, all the way to Washington, DC, where he then had a new home in the National Zoo at Washington, DC. So he'd lived there um, for many years, um, both that living Smokey and our Smokey in our campaign. Uh, we call them the guardian of our forest because they are concerned about preventing wildfires on our forests and grasslands across the United States. Now, Smokey, Smokey's message really has like five rules that we talk about. Um, so it's pretty easy to remember, just five. And um, so he wants you to know them and learn them. So the first rule is, as his famous saying goes, only you can prevent wildfires. Think about it as you, you can do it. We, we all can do it. The second rule is uh, when you have a campfire or an outdoor fire, always be careful with fire. Um, that's Smokey's second rule. Then rule number three is one thing that we've, we've talked about for a long time is never play with matches or lighters. Um, kids should always stay away from that. You're going to light a fire, it should be the adults that do that. And then rule number four is always watch your campfire. Never leave the campfire unattended, as we say. It's, they're fun to enjoy, um, but always have somebody stay with the campfire. And you can see in the picture there that Smokey has uh, a bucket of water and he also has a shovel with him uh, near that, that campfire. And finally, rule number five is. When you are going to leave your campfire, make sure it's completely out before you leave it. So these are all rules that we can all remember to make things because make make our forests and grasslands safer and more enjoyable to be outdoors. So now I'd like to turn it back to Jake and Smokey, who are going to give us a little some more tips on how you can prevent wildfires. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. So a few more uh, tips and stuff on uh, wild, wildfire prevention. Uh, please keep wildfire prevention in mind when visiting your public lands. Uh, never park in tall, dry grass uh, and check for fire restrictions. If campfires are allowed, keep them small, uh, never leave them unattended and put it out completely uh, before leaving. Uh, and also remember if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. Uh, some tips on camping. Before you go camping, check with local fire uh, agencies for current fire restrictions in your area. Uh, clear all flammable vegetation away from your campfire area. Uh, use a, de a designated or safe pre-existing campfire ring when possible. Uh, keep it small. Your campfire should never be larger than necessary uh, for cooking or personal warmth. Uh, never leave your campfire unattended and be prepared, uh, have proper tools to extinguish a campfire before you light it. Uh, bring a bucket, plenty of water, uh, and a shovel to drown and stir the campfire until it's completely out. Uh, to completely extinguish your campfire, drown a fire with water. Stir with your shovel, drown it again with water, and feel for any heat using the back of your hand. Uh, continue using this process until no heat remains. Make sure your campfire is cold to the touch before leaving. If it's too hot to touch, like I said, it's too hot to leave. Uh, fire restrictions, those uh, in the Western states happen a little more uh, often than back here in Missouri, but fire restrictions are used to restrict certain activities on varying land ownerships during periods of extreme fire uh, risks and hazards. Uh, fire restrictions have various levels called stages. Uh, one, two, and three is usually the stages. Uh, each state limits certain. Each stage limits certain activities uh, that can be done, and uh, vary depending on agencies. Sometimes, if it's too bad, we'll just close the forest down. Uh, for recreational shooting, 
uh, temperature, temperatures of bullet fragments uh, can exceed 800 uh, degrees Celsius, so about 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, though the fragments may uh, cool fast, they still can easily ignite nearby dry vegetation. Uh, shoot only in designated areas and adhere to local regulations. Uh, set up targets in areas clear of vegetation that could easily ignite from heated bullet fragments. Uh, the use of explosive targets on prohibited are, uh, the use of explosive targets is prohibited on public lands, and the use of steel core, jacket ammunition, armor piercing, uh, tracer bullets, and incendiary ammunition is prohibited on public lands. Uh, be prepared to extinguish any fires that may accidentally occur by having a fire extinguisher, shovel, and water readily available. Uh, for vehicles and equipment, ensure your vehicle is equipped with a fire extinguisher and a proper and functioning spark arrester. Uh, when traveling to and from your public lands with any type of trailer, ensure your chains are uh, properly connected. Uh, dragging chains can easily spark a wildfire. Uh, avoid parking on dry grass. The heat from your undercarriage and exhaust pipe can cause accidental igni uh, ignition. And then if you're doing any sort of welding outdoors, uh, clear away any flammable vegetation from your work area. Uh, and a lot of it, use your common sense. If uh, it's a dry, hot day, and your vegetation is receptible to a fire, uh, maybe plan a different day. Over to you, Tony. Well, hello everyone. We have certainly had the opportunity to learn a lot about fire and my good friend, Smokey Bear. I'm Tony Davis. I'm a natural resource specialist on the Ocala National Forest in North Central Florida. My forest is a part of that urban, that wildland urban interface that was mentioned earlier. And fire plays a major role in the ecosystem of Florida. October is Fire Prevention Month. And during Fire Prevention Month, I hope that we all can take the time to use fire safely, do things to protect our property and help and help Smokey spread his message. The Agents of Discovery app is a wonderful way to learn about fire prevention and Smokey's mission. The Agents of Discovery app is an augmented reality or AR experience that offers a three-dimensional playing experience. This free app, that's right, free app, can be downloaded in Google Play or the Apple Store. After you have downloaded the app, you simply open it up and search for the Smokey 2.0 mission. Once you have opened the mission, click on the challenges icon. The Smokey 2.0 mission offers 10 unique challenges that I promise will engage you. This challenge is designed to excite all learners in different ways. The mission takes place in Smokey's cabin. Agents will learn about good fire, bad fire, human-caused fires, keeping your campfire from becoming a wildfire, and vehicle safety, just to name a few. So upon completing the 10 missions, you have the, the opportunity to gain a reward. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm gonna show you the app here that I have on my phone because it is it is totally awesome. So this is what the app looks like. And so on the app, when you open up, the mission has directions. And the main thing to remember is you can play it, but to make, make sure you're safe, if you're gonna play at home, you'll need an eight by eight area. So that includes, if you're gonna play outside, you need a, a cleared eight by eight area. So make sure you have an eight by eight area that's cleared out of tripping hazards. And we just want you to have fun. We want you to learn and be able to know more about fire and the good attributes of fire. So it's a really cool thing to do. So I mentioned playing at home or playing outdoors. Either way, you can play at home outdoors or you can play on the national forest or you can play at school. So the information regarding all the ways of playing can be found at theagentsofdiscovery.com. So you can go to that website and learn about the different ways that you can play. I recommend playing at home, playing at school and playing on the forest. It's such an awesome app that the whole family can enjoy. It's always great to get out on our national forest and explore. And this is another tool to be able to put in your toolbox while you're out exploring and learning about the wonderful things that occur in nature. And fire is definitely a part of that. So Alexander, I'm gonna turn it back over to you at this time. All right, awesome. Hey guys, that was a lot of really cool stuff. I did have a question for Jake and I wanna see, Jake, I know you talked a lot about me. We, you know you, that you're an engine captain. Um, when getting out there into the, you know, the nitty gritty, you know, actually being out there in the thick of it, 
what is some of the, I know you covered a lot of the different things that can cause fires, especially like the human made ones. And we're talking about people that go out and camping and just kind of not knowing all the little things that they need to do and be aware of when they are leaving their campsite. But what would you say was the, probably the most common thing that starts an unintentional uh, fire? I'd say probably the most common is a uh, lack of knowledge of what exactly one little fire ember can do. Uh, you know, we get gusty winds. It doesn't take very much for a gusty wind for someone burning some trash in their backyard to spread off to the, the nearby tree line. The next thing you know, the tree lines butts up to national forest. And then we've got, you know, a couple thousand acre fire in our hands. So I'll just say the, uh, the lack of uh, knowledge of what one little ember can do and how destructive it can get. Okay. So I mean, that definitely is a good point there. So just knowing, I know I've been around campfires before and, you know, sometimes those logs will fall in and you see kind of them shoot up. Sometimes it is really easy to kind of ride them off and, you know, not really pay attention to them once they're kind of leaving the campfire area. But that is a good thing that we should be aware of and knowledge of is that we need to be watching where these things are going and trying to make Absolutely. sure that we are, you know, snuffing them out, making sure they're not landing in anything else that could potentially catch. Because, yeah, you, like you said, it could get out of hand really, really quickly. Um, yep. And then we talk about our fire principles, and we have our fire triangle. So we talk about, like, you know, the heat, the fuel, and the oxygen. When, you know, we talked, you talked a little bit about, you know, when you're putting out a campfire, um, you know, taking a shovel and, like, throwing some dirt or soil onto it and things like that. When dealing with the fire triangle, what is typically the easiest of the three elements or the three factors to try and either take away or give too much of so that way it burns itself out essentially? I would say depending on where you're camping and what supplies you have with you, but usually uh, having water with you, smothering out, taking the heat out of the fire triangle is usually the best uh, for cooling down and having a safe campfire to leave. If you don't have that, then obviously, you know, finding good mineral soil to use to mix in with your fire. Um, you know, taking all your, if there is still some logs that have uh, heat on them, you know, if you have a, you should have a shovel with you, but just taking and uh, working that a little bit, you know, kind of like what we do when we mop up on a fire, just taking the uh, heat off of that source of, uh, of fuel and just, you know, getting it down to basically your, when we, when we're on fires, we call it cold trailing and we basically have our hands in the black ash feeling for heat as simple as it sounds okay no i mean that makes a lot of sense i mean like you said again when we pour water on it i guess it is really easy for us to assume that it's out but like you said that heat can just remain underneath the surface you know we're just cooling off that surface spot but underneath could still be pretty hot and ready to go so that is a good tip to make sure that we have you know those optional things with us water extra dirt or soil on the side um, a tool that we can be able to use is spread out our logs get our fuel away from those heat sources to help keep them from re-catching and reigniting. I think that's a really a lot of good stuff. But guys, Tony, Marine, Jake, and of course, Smokey, I want to thank you all so very much for taking the time to talk to us today. As we end our live stream today, I also want to thank everyone for joining us that came on the live. Make sure to tune in next Tuesday, October 5th at 1 p.m. Central for our first week into our new theme, Creepy Creatures. We'll be talking all about bats, with Ch or Shelly Kolatsky from the Missouri Department of Conservation. So join us next week for an exciting adventure and remember to get out and enjoy this wild world that we have all around us. See you guys next time.